Hey everyone, this lesson is on oral candidiasis. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what causes this condition. We're also gonna talk about some of the risk factors for getting oral candidiasis. We're also gonna talk about some of the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms, how it is diagnosed and how it is treated. So oral candidiasis is also known as oral thrush. It looks like this. So we're gonna talk about this in more detail in the next couple of slides. So. It is an oral infection caused by fungi of the genus Candida. So they are actually yeast. And there are actually multiple species of Candida, but Candida albicans is the species that is the most common cause of oral candidiasis. It is often an opportunistic infection. So it infects people that have immunocompromise or who are sick due to another cause. So that is important to note here. Oftentimes, Candida albicans is a commensal fungi. So it's in our mouth, but it's not out of control because our immune system keeps it in check. But the fungus can actually be transmitted via direct contact. So if an individual has overt oral thrush, they can transmit the same fungi in larger quantities to someone else if, say, they kiss that person. So it can be transmitted via direct contact as well. There are some specific risk factors here that are important to understand. So number one is immunosuppression. So immunosuppression is going to be one of the biggest risk factors for getting oral thrush, and that can be either local or systemic immunosuppression. So what do I mean by these terms? Local immunosuppression is where we have immunosuppression only in the area of the mouth. What causes that? So what causes that is things like inhaled corticosteroids. So if someone inhales corticosteroids, say if they have asthma or if they have COPD, they can actually get some of that corticosteroid left in their mouth and it can cause local immunosuppression in the mouth leading to an increase in growth of fungi because the immune system isn't holding it in check. Systemic immunosuppression can be caused by a variety of other conditions. So systemic steroid use can cause a systemic immunosuppression. So it can increase fungal infections, but it can increase infections throughout the body. And some other medication that can cause systemic immunosuppression include immunomodulatory medication and some medical conditions that cause systemic immunosuppression include AIDS. The second risk factor is extremes of age. So extremes of age, very young and very old. So in one case, in very young individuals, they have a reduced or naive immune system. So their immune system hasn't developed fully. So they're more at risk for getting oral candidiasis. As individuals get older, their immune system also weakens. So very old individuals can also be at an increased risk of getting this as well. Other comorbid conditions can also increase your risk. And these include diabetes. So diabetes is also a cause of immunosuppression and smoking can also cause immunosuppression. Malnutrition is also a risk factor. So being deficient in certain vitamins can increase your risk for getting oral candidiasis. Medications, we talked about some of them before, but one I didn't mention is recent use of antibiotics. So why antibiotics can increase your risk for getting oral thrush is because you have normal commensal bacteria in your mouth as well. And those bacterial populations can compete with candida so that candida doesn't grow out of control. So when you take certain antibiotics, you might reduce some of the bacteria in your mouth, it can reduce some of those populations and it can increase your risk for having candida growing out of proportion so they don't have those bacterial populations keeping them in check. And the sixth risk factor is denture use. So using dentures increases your risk for getting oral candidiasis as well. So we're gonna see denture use being particularly more important in older populations who already have these other risk factors. So it's just going to add to the risk of getting oral candidiasis. So what is the pathogenesis of an oral candidiasis infection? So it all starts with a dysfunctional host immunity. Most of the time you're going to have commensal bacteria in your mouth that also compete with these candida fungi. Your immune system also holds it in check as well. But in the case of any of those risk factors we talked about before, you could have a reduced immune function either in your mouth or throughout your entire body. So it starts with a dysfunctional host immunity. And then because your immune system isn't holding the candida in check, it's not keeping it from growing, there's actually an overgrowth of candida. And in fact, candidal species flourish in moist environments like your mouth. 
And then once they flourish to a certain amount, they actually form what we call a pseudo membrane. So they actually adhere to the tongue and make it very difficult to actually remove. So we're gonna talk about that more in the next slide. So clinical features of oral candidiasis include a white opaque patchy plaque on the tongue and or the buccal membrane. So the buccal membrane is inside the cheeks. So you're gonna see a white plaque and it's patchy. So it's not completely filled in everywhere. And we could also see this white plaque inside the cheeks as well. And I mentioned this before, the plaques are very adherent. So it's very hard to essentially scrape this off the tongue, it's very difficult. But for the most part, the plaque on the tongue is painless, so it doesn't cause the patient to have any pain. Now there are other associated signs and symptoms of having oral candidiasis. So for the most part, you're gonna see something like this. A patient could also complain of loss of sense of taste. So essentially, all this plaque is blocking taste receptors, so they're not really able to taste well. And we can also see angular chelitis in patients with oral candidiasis. So angular chelitis is an inflammation of the corners of the mouth. So these can be painful and itchy, and it's associated with iron deficiency. And the fungi, Candida albicans, can spread to other locations. So it can spread from the tongue to other locations. One of them is the esophagus. So Candida albicans can spread to the esophagus, causing esophageal candidiasis. And this can lead to esophagitis, so inflammation of the esophagus. We can also see gastrointestinal symptoms as well, and we can see candidal diaper dermatitis in children. So if they have oral candidiasis, it's important to check their diaper area to see if they also have a candidal infection there. So how is oral candidiasis diagnosed and how is it treated? So diagnosis of oral candidiasis is a clinical diagnosis. Looking at the tongue and getting a history and looking at the risk factors can lead a clinician to making this diagnosis. A potassium hydroxide preparation can also be used, and if you do that, you can see pseudohyphae. And what's important with oral candidiasis is those risk factors we talked about before. So if they do have oral candidiasis, it's important to look back and see if they have those risk factors. So assess for risk factors. So immunocompromise, vitamin deficiencies, those types of things. And once it's diagnosed, how is it treated? Mild cases of oral candidiasis are treated with topical antifungals. So these include clotrimazole troches or nystatin. Moderate and severe cases of oral candidiasis will require oral antifungals. And these include fluconazole. And if the fluconazole doesn't work, if it's a refractory case, it doesn't go away, clinicians often move on to other types of antifungals like itraconazole, posaconazole, and voriconazole. So these types of azoles or these antifungals are used for refractory cases. And it's also important to note that if an individual is taking inhaled corticosteroids, it's important to rinse the mouth after each use. So this can be a way to prevent a recurrence of oral candidiasis in the future. So if they are taking these inhaled corticosteroids and that seems to be the risk factor, that seems to be the cause of the oral candidiasis, it's, it's important to rinse the mouth after each use. So again, diagnosis is a clinical diagnosis. KOH preparation can be used and you'll see pseudohyphae and it's important to assess for risk factors. Treatment in mild cases is topical antifungals like clotrimazole troches and nystatin. Moderate, severe cases, it's oral antifungals like fluconazole. In refractory cases, it's oral antifungals like itraconazole, posaconazole, or voriconazole. And one important point to note about inhaled corticosteroids, if a patient is on inhaled corticosteroids, it's important to rinse the mouth after each use to prevent future cases of oral thrush. So if you want to learn more about other infectious diseases, please check out my infectious disease playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.